If it were light out, I would ask you all to look out this window because just down the street, a new swath of suburban housing is being built. Suburban housing is low density and spread out over a large terrain. I've lived here in Benicia and Vallejo in these suburbs my entire life, as I'm sure many of you have as well. It's just part of living, like fast fashion almost. It's just there. Now what's wrong with it? What is the suburban problem? Let's start with taxes. Everybody loves taxes, right? Now let's say we have X amount of people living in a small area paying taxes. These taxes are going to fund the roads, the piping for water, the wires for electricity, all of the infrastructure. Now, if you take these people and you spread them out over a larger area, these same people are funding more roads between the houses, more pipes between the houses, more wires for electricity. The taxes that they pay do not catch up. So suburbs become a drain on the economy of the cities they're in. In Benicia, where I live, anywhere that is not on First Street is dilapidated as far as roads go. There's a road right next to my house um, that has bumps that reach literally eight inches off of the surface of the street. And what did the city do? They took a paintbrush and they drew a line over it. Um, <laughs> some of the other issues that arise from low-density housing um, are environmental. If you have all of these roads, all black, they absorb the sunlight into them. They absorb this heat, and then when it turns night, all the heat releases into our atmosphere, contributing to a global warming. I don't know where I've heard that before. Um, on top of this, lawns. That's a lot of green. That's a lot of water. America uses approximately 235 trillion gallons of water a year amidst our drought. Um, now, there's one big issue that I've been leaving off the table so far that is the biggest issue caused by suburbs, and that is cars. Um, when you have all the winding roads and low density that you see on the picture before this one, I probably should have planned that better, um, you have no central hub that everyone can go to for transportation. So there's no public transportation. You can't bike to the grocery store. You can't walk there either because residential and commercial zoning districts are completely separated. So this creates a necessity to take your car wherever you go, this two-ton pile of steel that's very expensive. Not everyone can afford a car, but you have to. Um, the average American family owns 1.8 cars. Now, how do we fix things? One of my favorite answers is the superblock. This was tried in Barcelona a little while ago, and what you essentially do is you take nine city blocks, close off all the roads in between them, and you turn them into communal areas, places for walking, public parks, commercial districts. Everything is intertwined, so you can leave your house, go out about your community, maybe do some shopping, go back to your room, and cool, that's your day. Um, it also uh, entangles the workplace and your house even more, cutting down on traffic. Um, think of all of the millions of Americans who sit in traffic, waiting, their car inching forward, inch by inch, releasing exhaust. This cuts down on that a lot, but it doesn't fix everything. Another city revitalization thing that I'm actually really proud of uh, that comes from the local area is from San Francisco, the Embargo Freeway. I'm sure some of our older people here remember it. Um, <laughs> um, we tore it down um, and uh, implemented a lot of um, pedestrian-friendly things. Like here we have some railways and place for buses to travel. If you've been there recently, you would know that there are a lot of tents and pop-up shops and just places to walk around and act like a community in. However, even this has issues. Um, you still have the parking lots of people driving over this bridge and having to put their car somewhere. 5% of all of the United States is parking lots. Next time you go on a drive, just take a look around. You'll see them everywhere. Now, what do we do about it? I missed it by four days. Uh, you got to vote. Look into your local politicians. 
look for ones who are willing to not just fund infrastructure, but fund upgrading our infrastructure, looking into reliable ways to keep our communities getting better. We can't just maintain the status quo that we have today because we will all die. I don't want to die. I don't want our kids to die. So please, do your own research. Vote. Look for propositions. Vote. Participate in democracy. Thank you.